uftarqu salah The difference between a Muslim and a kufr is salah. Then it is your duty and my duty to prove to the people that this is the true religion. Make everybody equal in the sight of Allah. And there's no symbol, no image, no idol. We worship him directly. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. some of the things are also different about the prophets, didn't we? We found out that they live at different times, a little bit difference in their languages. And we also found out that they lived in different situations, cultures and circumstances, things that happened to them. But today I thought maybe we could discuss something that happened way back at the very beginning at the time of Adam, salam. Remember when we say any prophet's name, like Jesus, like Moses, like Abraham, we always say, alayhi salam, or peace be upon him. And with that, I want to go back to talk about Adam, alayhi salam. And, you know, when he was first created, Allah created him from dirt. Now, dirt, as we know, is all over the earth, isn't it? And dirt is many colors. You can look at dirt. It might have some brown in it. It might have some orange. It might have different, you know? And so... All the people of the earth today are also different colors, aren't they? Isn't that interesting? And Allah made Adam from a kind of clay, 
We call it sounding play. You know what it means? It means that when they work with it, it makes a sound. That's strange. But we don't call, in Arabic, we don't say people are human beings. In Arabic, we say they are what? Insan. And that's some of the things we'll talk about today, too. Why we're called insan. Now, let us go back and see. Here's Adam. And imagine it. Here is Adam. And we discussed he was so big. Do you know how big Adam was? He was so tall, bigger than a building. He was very tall. And he tried to talk to the angels, you know, because there were angels at his time. But they were busy. They were always worshiping Allah. And maybe he would talk to them and he'd go, yeah, yeah, whatever, and then back to worshiping Allah. So he was lonely. And one of the things that had happened, Allah told Adam to give names to everything. Allah had already told the angels, you know, if you know anything, tell me the names of all the things I've created. The angels said, we don't know anything. How we know anything if you didn't give us the knowledge? But when Allah told Adam, give names to everything, Adam named everything. Yep, and after that experience, I guess, he was pretty tired, huh? He lay down, he fell asleep. Allah made him fall asleep. And during his sleep, Allah did something. Allah took the bone of Adam, which is the short bone from the ribs. And then Allah made that bone have skin on it and flesh. And then eventually it became what? It became Eve. That was the first woman it was made from the bone of Adam. Did you imagine that? So Adam woke up, you know, he's like, Hey, who are you? You weren't here before. She said, that's right. He said, where did you come from? She said, I came from you. From me? And when he realized, he said, hmm. So then he told her her name. He said, you are Hawa. Now the angels are going, hey, how come you called her Hawa? He said, because she's created from something alive. And Hawa in Arabic is from the same word as Hai. And Allah is al Hai, which means what? Always alive. Eternally alive. That is the name of Allah. Because he never dies. So she's called Hawa, which means alive. So women are coming from the same place men are coming from. We're all coming from the same place. Allah told us in the Quran, Ya Yulan Nasa Takarabukum Alay Khalakakum min Nafsin Wahid, Wa Khalakum min Hazaljaha, Wa Bitha Rijalan Katirin Wan Nisa. And that's the meaning of what I'm telling you right now. That he said, O oh, human beings, you're coming all from this source. He says to us, O oh, human beings have taqwa for Allah, for your Lord. And Allah is the one who created all of you from one single person. Who? Adam. And from him created his mate, Hawa. We call her Eve, too. And from these two, Allah brought forth many men and many women. It's important for us to know this because just like we need to know that men have responsibilities and things they have to do, also women have responsibilities and things they have to do, too. Now, another subject that comes up with this is called knowledge. Because one of the amazing things about Adam, and all of us too, is the ability to learn. I don't guess there's anything else on the whole entire planet Earth, really, that has the ability to learn like a human being. We can learn so much and understand so much. And this is something coming all the way back from Adam. Allah gave that to us, this desire, if you will, or love, to want to know more. I want to know more. So sometimes we hear stories and we want to hear more and more. Why? Because inside of you, there's something saying, get some more knowledge, get some more knowledge. But then the important thing to do is to know how to use your knowledge, isn't it? The first knowledge all of us have is the knowledge about ourselves. And we found from the story of Adam, he had knowledge about himself. He had knowledge about the bone that came from him that became his wife. He had understanding. Then the next kind of knowledge that we need to have is the knowledge about the one who created us. Where did we come from? Did we make ourselves? No. That's kind of dumb, isn't it? No, but it had to be from God, Allah Almighty. He created all of us. So if we know that and we said He created us, this is a good kind of knowledge. 
Now, there are some people that deny it. They say, no, everything happened by accident. Some people say we came from monkeys. <laughs> That's pretty good. When you consider, if we came from monkeys, how come we still have monkeys today? Hmm? Now, I want to give you a specific story about some people. A long, 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 long time ago, there was a prophet by the name of Noah. Have you heard about Prophet Noah? He's the one that had the great, big, big, big boat. And he put the animals in it. You remember this story? When the big flood came, did you ever hear about this? Yeah. Well, let's talk about that for a minute and see what we learn from this subject. During his time, there were some people that were very nice, very good, and they used to do Islam. They used to do what God wants them to do in peace. They were the best people. Very religious, praying, giving charity all the time, taking care of the poor people. And this is what Allah likes. They were very famous for being what? Very good. But they died. Everybody's going to die. We already talked about that. And after they were gone, some other people would tell their children, you should be like this lady or you should be like this man. You should be like them because they were real good. So they made some like statues of them from rocks or something, you know. They made statues so you could go look and said, this is what they look like. And this is so-and-so, and this is so-and-so, and this is so-and-so over here. And they were like this, and this, and this. And they said, oh, okay, but think about them. Now, who's behind this is the devil. The devil's tricky. He said, yeah, put those statues and remind the people to be good. The devil was telling people to be good? No, no. He was telling them to look at these statues to remind them, because what's going to happen? When those people grow up, and they have children, and they say, if you want to be good, go to this statue. That statue is so-and-so, and it does this, it does that. And then when they grow up, they tell their children, go over there and pray to this statue, and if you want any good. Oh, they get the story mixed up, didn't they? So the people are going to the statue here and here, and they were going to the statues and saying, oh, I need this, I need that, and thank you, oh, you gave me so much, oh, la, 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 la. And they were calling the statues by names like gods, and they named them many names, many names they gave for this God and this God and this God and that God, but they're nothing but rocks. And Allah hates that. Allah hates it when anybody is praying to something other than Him. Because Allah created the rocks. Allah created everything. So why do you say thank you to a rock that can't even do anything? And why would you ask a tree and the tree can't go anywhere. Huh? So why? What is in your brain making you say this? Shaitan telling you, oh, go and, you know, give some nice things to the statue. Well, now, this gets really funny. The statue doesn't even eat, but there you are. You're taking milk. You're taking food. Poor children, huh? All over the place need food. But no, you don't give it to them. You go give it to a rock and you leave it there. I mean, this is a real no-brainer. <laughs> Allah doesn't like that. And the prophets warned against it. Because what happened next? The people began to pray to those rocks so much they thought they were gods. Now, Noah was telling people, just worship Allah. Just worship Allah alone without any partners. That's what you need to do. They told him, hey, get out of town. Get a life. You're crazy. They were really calling him crazy a lot. And then Allah let him understand there was going to be a great rain that was going to come. Now, that was funny because the people at that time, their rain was really not there. They were having what's called drought. Have you heard of drought? You know what's drought? No rain, no water. The land is dry, dust everywhere, wind is blowing, hardly anything will grow. If it does grow, it doesn't last. It's problems, lots of problems. And he was telling them there's going to be a big rain. And they're saying, okay, sure, go rest, old man. But he's telling them, no, it's going to be a big rain. You need to get ready for this. You need to believe in the God of the world. You need to go with me. They said, go with you where? He said, I'm going to build a boat, a big boat. They said, in the desert, out here, you're going to build a boat? <laughs> okay, have a good time, man. We're doing pretty well. 
but I feel certain areas need attention. Firstly, no counting machines for more efficient operation. And the top brands available are Delarue, NCL and Plus. Mm -hmm. We must shred our waste confidential documents. The most reliable paper shredders are of Rexel and Faceit. We're spending a lot of man hours preparing regular mails every month. PFE has the most efficient bulk mailing system. That's very good. When can we have a list of all the suppliers? We don't need a list, sir. No list. Just one name. IED. Time saved is money saved. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the last and final messenger and no other messenger no other prophet is going to come after him that's the reason he was not sent only for the Muslims or for the Arabs he was sent for the whole of humankind we have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the worlds as a mercy to all the creatures as a mercy to the whole of humanity Dr. Zakir Naik speaks on Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the various world religious scriptures in Truth Exposed, starting from 14 November, every Monday to Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7 p.m. India on Peace TV. Yasir Fazaga Islam is not one horizontal line where everything is equally the same. That is not Islam. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the greatest liberator that humanity has ever known, that humanity will ever know. We are the best ummah that was erected for the welfare of mankind. Don't live today as if there's no tomorrow. Poverty is never celebrated in Islam. As Muslims, self-pity does not exist. Watch your character, that becomes your destiny. Year to year after, every Monday and Tuesday at 4 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6.30 p.m. India on Peace TV. <laughs> made the Quran easy to understand and remember. Then is there any that will receive admonition? Learning Quranic Arabic every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 5.00 p.m. India on Peace TV. <laughs> He said, I'm going to build a boat, a big boat. They said, in the desert, out here, you're going to build a boat? <laughs> okay, have a good time, man. So he built this big boat, big. And some people believed, and they helped him, and they did things, and they built this huge, 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 huge boat. How big was it? Huge, really huge. And then Allah inspired him to take animals, a pair take two of these and two of these and two of these and two of those and two of those and two of those and two of those and like that. So now here is Noah with a boat and no water and taking animals and putting it in it. What do you think the people were thinking? <laughs> but some people knew he was telling the truth because he was saying there's only one God. Worship him. Come on, guys. Something bad is going to happen. Please. And you know what happened? It started to rain. He said, see, it's starting to rain. They're going, okay, so a couple of drops of water, and you think it's going to float your boat? <laughs> okay, bye. Some of his family got in. But his own wife said, Noah, <laughs> no way. And she wouldn't go in. His own son said, Dad, give it a rest. And he wouldn't get in. As the water started to come up, he said, see, I told you, look, water's coming up. It's coming up. It was coming out of the ground. Look. It's raining down and the water coming up. Don't you see what's going to happen? I told you it's going to happen. They're going, oh, please, a little bit of rain. Okay, so you're excited. So what? But then the rain came more and more. And he's saying, please, my son, get in the boat. Get in the boat. He said, don't worry, I'll go up the mountain. He said, it's going to go high up the mountain. He said, I'll go higher up the mountain, okay? I'm not getting in your boat. Then the water got higher and higher. And finally, they had to close the door. They had to close the door of the boat or else the boat would have filled up with water. So they sealed it. They sealed the boat's door. It meant nobody else could get in. And the water kept coming. 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 
And pretty soon, that huge boat started to rock a little bit, and a little bit more, and more. And then it started rising up, because the water was really that high, and it was going up. And the people were going up the mountain and getting to the top of the mountain and trying to hang on. And then pretty soon, all was totally covered with water. And the only people still alive were in that boat. And the only animals that survived were the animals with Nura. What happened? The people didn't obey. So Allah sent a real big proof for us because we can look and see what will happen. If you don't obey Allah, you could suffer in this world and suffer again in the next world. And the hellfire is horrible. So it's very, very important for us to listen and learn about what these prophets were telling us. The only way we can be sure about that today, though, is to go to Prophet Muhammad and ask him because he's the last prophet. Now some people will say, well, he's dead. What do you mean? Well, of course we know he's dead. But we still have what he said. It's called the Quran. It's still exactly as it always was never been changed, and we can go to it, and you can read the story I just told you. It's in the Quran. You can read about Noah, and it mentions his name, Noah. And it's his name in Arabic, Noah. You can read it. You can also learn a lot about what happens to people. Because after the waters start going away, going away, going down, you know? So, according to some stories, he was sending out these birds to see what's going to happen. And the bird that came back and had a branch of something, he said, ah, this means it's safe. Because if you found a branch of something, then something's growing somewhere, right? Because they've been for many, many days and nights out there. Oh, yeah. By the way, it rained for so many days and nights. And they were in the ocean for so many days and nights. I'm sure they were ready to see some dry land. Now, when I tell you the next part, you have to think. A mountain is high up, right? Do people have boats in mountains? No. But Noah did. How? Well, when the water went down, what's the first thing that's going to be there? The mountaintop, right? And the first mountaintop is a very high mountain. It's in Turkey. I've been to Turkey, by the way. And this mountain is called Judy. Mount Judy. And it's in the Ararat. Ararat mountain range is Judy. And the ship or boat of Noah alayhi salam landed on that mountain. Now, wait a minute. I want you to think about something. Can you imagine after it landed, you know, it's like, whoa, open the door and let's go out. Okay, whoa, we're on a mountain. <laughs> now what? You know, they had to take the animals out, had to get set up, a lot of stuff had to happen. But today, that exact place is called Kurdistan. And I learned from some people who came from there that a long time ago, it, the whole area was called Judy. Then they called it Kudi. And then they called it Kurdi. And now it's Kurdistan. It was the same place. And by the way, I know somebody from there, and he calls himself Ahmed al Kurdi. Because he said, I'm from there. You know? Anyhow, so what we learned from this experience with Noah Ali Salam is when a prophet tells you to do something, you better do it or you could suffer here. Horrible. And you could suffer in the next life too. Another thing that we get out of this story is that not all people are alike. And just because somebody's a prophet doesn't mean that his children are also going to be good people. And also his wife may not be good. Even the parents of the prophet may not be good because each person is different. You are not responsible for what your mother thinks or for what your father thinks or what your children think. Your job is just to tell the truth. Always tell the truth. And if they accept it, that's good. And if they don't, well, that's their problem, isn't it? So one of the things that I like to remind myself and remind others too is that when you're telling other people about God, if they don't want to hear it, okay, let it go. You don't force anybody. But if they want to know more, we can sure tell them more. Because we have many, many stories 
many stories of the prophets. And some of the stories I've been telling you, and there's more stories that I want to tell you in the future. I want to tell you about the stories of Adam. More stories we have about him too. Oh, yeah. More stories about Ibrahim and Moses and David. I didn't even tell you about David. His name is Dawood. Can you say Dawood? Dawood. Yeah, Dawood in Arabic, huh? He had a son, Suleiman. We call him Solomon. Solomon. But Suleiman. And then there's Jacob. Jacob's good prophet. And he had sons. Oh, yeah. Actually, a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, Jacob had sons, yeah. And Isaac. We know about this one. And Ishmael. We know about them as prophets. And then there's another prophet. His name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? Yusuf. Say it again. Yusuf. Well, you said it just right. My wife calls me useless. Because <laughs> I never have any time to fix this. She wants fixed around the house. <laughs> but, you know, each one of these prophets has stories that when we learn about them, it helps us to know how to deal with some of the problems that we have. Yusuf had some big problems with his family. All of his brothers were against him. Can you imagine that? Yeah. When he was little, he had an idea about being a prophet, that Allah wanted him to be a prophet. And they were very jealous of him. You know what they did to him? You want to know? They dropped him in a well. They went back and told his dad. You know what they told to the father? They said, oh, he died. He died, yeah. And they brought back some blood from a sheep, you know. They said, yeah, oh, we got, you know, a wolf got him. A wolf just tore him all apart. Here's his clothes. We're real sorry. Okay, Dad, he's gone. But they really didn't do that. They left him in a well. Now, wells back then were something amazing because these rocks, you know, were cut away and you went down, down. You had to climb down in it to get your water and stuff. And they left him in there because they knew he couldn't get out. And they said, maybe some caravan passing by will find him, and then they'll take him. And that's what happened. Caravan. Caravan means like uh, camels and donkeys and people coming with a lot of stuff to sell, you know, trade route. And as they were going along, going along, they said, let's get some water. There's a well. They stopped. They go down in. Hey, there's a boy in here. Ah, good fortune for us. Why? Because we can sell him. And they took him to Egypt to sell him. And when they got into Egypt, they sold him for a small amount. Yet, he was worth a lot, as you'll learn later in some of the stories we're going to be telling. So this is another valuable lesson that we have from the prophets. So many stories, so many lessons to learn. But the most important thing is to remember, these are not just stories. These are things for us to use in our brain and in our heart so that we can do what Allah wants us to do, so that we can be people who do Islam, which means surrender to Him in peace, and then we will get the peace. And how do we say peace? Salam. 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 And if I want to say salam to everybody, I say? Salam alaikum. So we'll end as we started. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, Lord of all the worlds, there is no God but He. The living and eternal Allah, Huya Allah, Huya Allah. When there's war, people talk about peace. When there's violence, people call for peace. When there's terrorism, people demand peace. Islam does more than talk about peace. Islam demonstrates true peace for all mankind. Join us on Peace 
Feel the impact with Yusuf Estes in Peace Missile next on Peace TV. Islam is still spreading because it is not the religion of paper. Islam is a way of life. Words of warning. On the day of judgment, every human being is vulnerable to be touched by hellfire. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. Mamdu Muhammad. We should remember what have we prepared for the day of judgment. Reminder, every Thursday at 3 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 5.30 p.m. India on Peace TV. want you to do what your parents want you to do.